Hey guys, it's Tark with Cyclone FPV, and today we are going to be looking at the X90 Plus, which you can see right here. Uh, and I am going to be doing the X90 Plus uh, with R9MM um, updates. Uh, and we're going to do the whole 2.3 uh, OpenTX firmware upgrade. We're going to do the uh, firmware updates on the R9M and R9MM receiver. And we're going to put it all together and make sure that everything's functioning properly. This is actually, this portion is going to a customer of mine. And uh, he requested that I do this update for him. So I said, okay, let me do that and make a video of it at the same time since we're kind of on a video run here. So let me, um, let me see if I can move this to the top there. There we go. Let's do that. And this way we can clear up the bottom uh, area here. Okay, so what we're going to do first is uh, I've also got the computer screen up and running. So um, let's just see what we've got on here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start the, um, go ahead and start this up. And let's see, let me just exit through. And let me get to where I can um, dim some of this town because I know that it is a little bright so I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, let me see color and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change so that there's not so much blue and that should make it easier to see I think yep perfect there you go all right so this should make it easier for everybody to see now let's get out of here all right so here's what we've got right here go to menu and um, what we're everything else the date and everything isn't set yet I need to probably change that and let's go I hate to see. Uh, there you go. And then let's do this. Nine. And I think it is the 24th today. Yeah. Holy cow. Let's go the right direction. Okay. And it is 13. 32. Okay, 1.32 p.m. All right, now let's go down a little bit. Okay, so everything is fine here, I think. Uh, let's go, let's uh, hit page, 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 page. Okay, so what we know we're running here is we're running 2.2.3, okay? This is the firmware I loaded before, and um, this is the release of it, and then you can see all the information here, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and update all this, and uh, make sure that we've got everything set, okay? so. Let's go ahead, and usually what I'll do, uh, like I've shown you guys before, is I'll go ahead and take the memory stick out uh, so that we can just format the stick and, and clean it up, right? Because I'm going to make uh, a whole new setup. Um, but uh, something I think we're going to do today, let me go ahead and power this down, and let's go ahead and take the battery out, or take the, yeah, I'm going to remove the battery here so I can get to the memory stick, which is right here. All right, so I'm going to take that memory stick and lay it down there, put the cover back on, if I can, for the time being. Although I am going to be taking it off again anyway. Uh, but let's, you know what, that's true. So no sense in getting all that done. Let's set this aside real quick. And let's bring the keyboard down. And let me find my USB uh, memory stick adapter Dumaflotch, uh, which you cannot find for some reason. Don't know where it went. Um, but I will find something that should work. Of course, all my stuff is missing because it has been an absolute mayhem here and i can't find it all right wonderful so uh what i need to do is i need to get a, a reader real quick so i can format this um uh, memory stick so give me one second i will find that somewhere let's try this one. Oh, here it is all right got it no it was here all right so i'm gonna go ahead and pop this in here all right and i'm gonna basically do this from scratch so that uh it doesn't have this radio has nothing on it okay so let me go ahead and put this memory stick in here and we're going to go ahead and put this screen up so you guys can see it there we go and we are going to format the memory stick so we're, this is our sd card here and uh, we're going to right click on it left click on format and we're just going to leave everything like it is and click start click yes and we're going to delete all the contents okay so now our memory stick is clean right now this is the blog site where I'm gonna be adding the links and stuff as we go, so bear with me as I switch back and forth. And then you'll be able to go to the website and be able to use these links and downloads and stuff. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and head over to OpenTX. Now I've already loaded 2.3, all right? But you guys need to do that. So I'm gonna take uh, this link here and I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna put it right here. So if you go to the blog site, you can get there just by clicking this and find everything at one location. So let me paste that, okay? Insert link and uh, we'll save that. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to go to the 
uh, companion uh, section of it, right? So when we do that, under, no, under news here, you can click this, or you can go to downloads. Uh, so we're gonna click downloads and make that our link. So I'm gonna highlight this, and I'm gonna click copy. And I'm just gonna put it here so we can at least give you the link so it's easier to do. Click insert link, we'll save. All right, let's go back now. So what we wanna do is we wanna see our, the newest build, right? So the newest build um, is going to be, let me see how they've put it here. Uh, I got here a little bit different than normal. So let me go back, because 2.2.4 is what I'm running now. Let me go back here real quick. So let me go to the home and then go down to open TX. See this link right here under news? I'm gonna click that. And under this area, are you, you're gonna see the release, uh, um, uh, what is it called? Release candidates, that's right. So because it's not a uh, final branch, right? These are all functioning on release candidates. Uh, we're still going to stick to the main page and upgrade to 2.3. Once it becomes uh, final here, then you will start seeing this page populate. And then 2.1 will move down, 2.2 will move down, 2.3 will begin up here. So for right now, when you go to the home page and you click on this link right here, that's going to be the um, link to get you to your downloads page, which is right here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to go ahead and add this here. I'm going to put 2.3 RC5 downloads. Let's just do that instead. And we'll change that link. And this way you can download the exact same software I'm using. So there you go. And that will automatically start the download, or it should, because on our page, if you go to our, our page and you see this link and we click it, uh, we are going to see the companion download right here, okay, of two point what have you. Now, if you already have it like I do, now you'll just go and extract this, right, and run it. But if you already have it like I do, now I'm going to go ahead and open this, okay? And when I open it, um, it's going to, it should prompt me to automatically go to 2.5 because I'm running 2.4. So it's, oh, there you go, a new version of Companion is available. Yes, click yes. Okay, so assuming if you already have 2.3, uh, then you don't really have to download anymore. It's going to automatically do it for you. It's going to ask you where you want to put it and just let it pick its default spot. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to click save. Uh, Actually, I'm going to put it in my downloads folder, sorry, because I have all these starting, as you can see. So I'm going to click Save here, uh, and I guess it says I already down. Oh, I downloaded it. That's right. I'm going to click Yes, because I forgot I downloaded it on its own as well. Let me get my drink. I'm getting thirsty here. Okay. Yes, I'll launch the installer. Click yes, and let's just get going. All right, click next. And then it's gonna say, do I wanna open it and run it? And I'm gonna click yes, okay? So it's gonna finish and we're gonna get started. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna download the SD card contents, which is right here. So click this link, and you're gonna see all the SD card contents here. So I'm gonna take this and copy this link I'm going to paste it on the SD card contents. Now, this will apply towards any SD cards that you need, okay? SD card contents that you need, and you'll see here in a second. Let me click Save. Because um, you have all the lists right here, all right? Now, we are running the X90+, Plus, not the X9D, but the X9D+, Plus, which is right here. So I'm going to click that, and that's only because I'm updating my radio. So this is kind of a video on radio and receiver and module. So we're going to click this here. And then we're going to download the newest version, click it, and it's going to save it here. So it's going to go to my downloads folder. And I am going to, as you know, in my downloads folder, I have a folder called transmitters, uh, which is right here. And this is where I keep all my software. Now, this is my X9D Plus for a customer. And this is uh, uh, X9D Plus 2019 edition. So now I'm going to make a folder called uh, X9D Plus uh, Special Edition. Okay, that's mine. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna drop the download in there that's coming in from, uh, uh, it should be here, it's almost done. You can see it's 113 megs right here and that's the SD card content. So I'm gonna cut that. And I'm gonna go to my transmitter, my X9D SE. I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, so there's my uh, card contents. Now I'm gonna go ahead and right click and left click on extract. And I'm gonna extract right there. And it's going to take a, a few seconds. So while it's doing that, 
Let me switch to my OpenTX, and it's going to say new version of OpenTX, uh, Flux R9. No, I'm not going to do that right now um, because I'm not updating my open my uh, QX7 right now. So I'm going to click no, and and I'm going to click no. I don't want to ignore it, but I don't. I need to create a new profile. So in OpenTX, what we're going to do now is we're going to go settings, radio profiles, and we're going to now. I already have one called Targ X9D Plus, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to go to uh, add a radio profile, and I'm going to call this one. X9D, sorry, Tarix, X9D plus SE for special edition, okay? And on this one, I want the following. I want to use my, um, I want the actual values instead of percentages. Uh, I want the, uh, I'll take the font. I'll take the Flex uh, R9M. Uh, I will not, I'll take the no heli, uh, no global variable uh, adjustings, and I'll take the blue scripts. That's pretty much it. I don't care about the rest of it. Um, all right, and let me see what this one. Some of these are different depending on what you have. So disable rest. Okay, so I'm going to stick with this build right here, and I'm going to the splash screen isn't an issue. I'm going to go now and select my SD card path and be pay very close attention under downloads. There's my transmitters. There's my new folder. I'm going to name a folder uh, card contents. Okay, and I know that I'm gonna have to have a backup folder, so I'm gonna create another folder called backup. Okay, so when I go over here, I'm gonna tell it that I wanna select the card contents as my folder, right there, and my backup, I wanna select uh, my X90 SE, and I wanna select backup as my folder, so select, okay? Now, I am running TAER, so I'm just gonna set that up as my default. Okay, mode two is fine. Uh, we can append the version number and we can, or firmware number, and we can offer to write after it's downloaded. That's fine. Um, I do want to enable automatic backup. And now I'm going to go to my application settings. And I am going to take release candidates, okay? Because if you don't select release candidates and that's all that's available right now, you won't have any downloads to download, all right? So you want to make sure that you leave this check. Do not go to nightly builds unstable. I wouldn't go that route, but release candidates I think are fair, all right? And I have not had a problem with them at all. My backup folder will be my transmitter backup folder I've created, which you can create one on your own. Put that in your main transmitter folder, and that's going to be for the transmitter backups. I'm going to click OK. All right. Now, now that I've got all my settings, and if you want to see those again, here they are. X9D plus SE. This is the radio I've selected. I'm using the language is English, and then I've selected the parameters of my download, okay, which I would recommend right now. You stick with these, and if you have any questions about that, I have a video out on explains these right now, but I want to kind of keep going forward. I've got my card contents folder, my backup folder. Uh, I've got all my options selected here, and I'm clicking OK. Now, I want to go and I want to download um, the, uh, I want to check for the download of the updates to write, okay? So I'm going to click download. And this is the file name with all the details of what I'm asking for. I'm going to say check for updates. And it's going to say there are updates, and it's available. Do you want to download it? And I'm going to click yes, okay? And I'm going to put this. I'm going to go to transmitters, go to my folder here, and now I'm going to put this, uh, I'll lay it for right now, I'm just going to paste it in this main page here, and I'm going to select here to put it in, okay? And we're going to let it download. While that's downloading, I want to go back to my SD card contents, and this is the extracted folder here, okay? And here's all the files that I want to keep, so I'm going to highlight them, but sorry, one thing I want to do first is I want to get rid of all the languages that I don't need, because they take up the most space, so let's delete everything, except for me, I'm going to keep English only. All right, and I'm going to delete the rest of them, and that's going to remove about 100 megs of space, okay? Because before we did this, we were at uh, about 113 compressed, about 138 uncompressed, and now if you look at the properties, uh, we've only at 16.9, which I've shown you guys this before. This is how you make things kind of move a little quicker. All right, so we're going to take all this data here, and we're going to click Cut, and we're going to go up and go to our card contents and click Paste, okay? And there we go. Now we've got all our stuff here. Now we just downloaded our OpenTX firmware, which is this long file right here, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten the file name and I'm just gonna call it OpenTX, uh, I'll just leave it like that or I'll leave it like this and then the date maybe. So uh, uh, 09, 09 okay? And we'll leave it at that. All right, so I'm going to take that now. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go to my card contents, and I'm going to go to my firmware folder, and I'm going to make a new folder here. 
and I'm going to call it um, OpenTX uh, Firmware. Okay, and I'm going to paste it in here. And that's how I'm going to organize my firmware and other files. So there's my OpenTX firmware right there. All right. Now I need to go to Fry Sky's website. And I need to, uh, no, I don't want to write it to the radio now. I need to go to Fry Sky's website, which I'm, I created a link here. So we're at Fry Sky's website, and we want to go to the downloads page, and we want to find the X9D Plus first. We're going to go in order. And we will go with X9D. Uh, where is it? X9D Plus here. No, that's special edition. Let's load some more. X9D Plus SE. That's mine right there. And I will give you links to both of these. So on mine, I put X9D firmware, but I'm going to also put X9D plus firmware download. This way we have them both, okay? Because I'm doing the SE. There we go. So let's go here, and I'm just going to copy this link. And I'm going to put that here. So if you guys need it, you can find it. Okay. Now I'm going to go back later and I'll do the other one. All right. So um, what we want to do first is we want to check all the updates and see where we're at. Um, uh, I don't think we're doing the uh, XJT upgrade, but let me see what they're offering here. Uh, no, that's going to be a little old. All right. So I'm going to go to my uh, firmware file first and we're going to see what they've released. Okay. So there's really nothing here that uh, I need to download because the firmware that we've got from OpenTX is far more updated than what they've got here. So I'm going to kind of bypass this for now and let me see what they've got in the XGT. Again, this is this is really old. If you have one of these, you've probably already done these, but the, the files in the OpenTX are going to have pretty much all of this except for some of the internals, but um, this has already been done. I mean, this is these are two years old, so there's, there's nothing new basically that's come out. So we can skip this site. What we want to do now is now that that download's done, let me go back because I want to get you the X9D link as well. X9D plus link. So let me go do that real quick. It's just moving very slow today. All right, so let's go to the X9D plus. Uh, where is that? I guess I have to click again. There we go. I'll click this just so I can give you guys a link to it as well. And I may just make one page one day that has it all. That's probably going to be the easiest, so I don't have to keep doing this, you know, because FrySky isn't changing the location of their downloads pages. So these are going to stay the same. So I'll probably just start adding it um, as soon as this thing quits moving like frozen molasses. All right. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and just copy this link. Go over here, and I'll put it here so that you guys can leave access to it. Okay, so let me link that. And there we go. Okay. So that part's done, I'm gonna save this. And now what we need to do is we need to go to the downloads for the R9M module, which is what we're gonna be using, which is this piece right here, okay? And we're gonna to need to go to the R9MM module or downloads page because that's the, that's the flight controller we're gonna, um, the receiver we're gonna be using. So let's go down to uh, modules and let's find the R9M, which is right here. And I'm gonna give you a link to that. Okay, which is right here. So let me click copy. And I'm gonna go here. Give you that link. Okay, and save. And then what we wanna look at is we wanna look at the firmware that's available. Uh, and so I'm not using the Flex firmware right now. I'm just gonna uh, stick with this firmware here. Uh, and from the discussion that we've had with uh, FrySky and their support team, it is understood that we should be able to just download the most recent firmware and it should include everything from before. There's not a guarantee, but uh, so far it seems to be working fine. And if you find out any different, please let me know because I always load them from lowest to highest in order of the date. And now we're gonna try this a different way. And so far it's been pretty successful actually. So the only thing I really care about is this file right here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and download this file. All right, it's gonna download. And while that's downloading, I wanna go back to my downloads now and find the R9MM uh, receiver downloads page. And I'm gonna put that link uh, here. 
And I'm going to show you what to do with this, and then we'll be good to go, okay? So let's go to R9MM. Very slow, their site. I mean, I don't know what's going on today, but there we go. All right, so let me copy this. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna paste it. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna click save. So now, if you were to go to the website and go to the tutorials page, um, you could just click here. And obviously, I have not added a bunch to this site yet, but I will. But you can now just go straight here instead of having to go to the different websites. And I meant to put a FrySky link. I will do that later. Okay. So the firmware for here is a little interesting here. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just download the one main firmware again, which is the uh, February 13th, 2019 release. So we're going to click that, okay? And you're going to see that starting to download here. So now we would have downloaded pretty much everything that we needed. So let's go now to our downloads folder. And we're going to find the files here that we just downloaded, okay? And what you have here is you have the, it's very easy to tell, you have the transmitter and you have the receiver with the TX and the RX. So I'm going to highlight both of these and click cut. And I'm going to go to my transmitter folder and go to my SE and I'm going to click paste. Okay. And now what I want to do is I'm going to make a folder here. Uh, let's see. Let's make a new folder. Well, you know what? Yeah, because I like to keep my downloads organized. So I'm just going to call this FR Sky Firmware. Okay, and in that, I'm going to take these files and I'm going to drop them in there. All right, and this is going to be the original location for all the firmware that I need. So we're going to go ahead and uh, extract the receiver files first. Okay, and then we're going to extract the transmitter files. All right, now in the receiver files, we're going to open the folder and there's usually going to be like a subfolder. Oh, UPS is here. All right, uh, I might be interrupted by UPS real quick, but we'll see. Um, so you see how I clicked in once, right? So I clicked the folder and then there's a subfolder. So we want to get rid of one of those, but we'll deal with that in a second. You can see right here that you have the um, FCC version and the EU version basically, right? So I'm not using the EU, so I'm just going to select those and I'm going to click delete. All right. Now I'm going to look in these folders here and I see that I've got the slim version with FCC and F port, and then I've got the slim, uh, and then, the, then I've got the standard R9 with the FCC and F port, okay? The other option I have, the other folder I have is the mini and the MM, which both use the same firmware. And so right here, I've got the mini FCC and the mini FCC with F port. So these two folders are legit, they look good. So I'm gonna cut these folders, and I'm gonna go to my uh, X90 folder, I'm gonna go to my card contents and my firmware, and I'm going to create a new folder called FrySky FRSKY firmware, right? And I'm going to paste these two folders in here. This is going to keep things very organized, all right? And it's really, I stress it on all my videos, keep your card contents organized, all right? So we do have now our, um, our information here, and here's our FrySky stuff. I'll leave the originals here, okay? And we'll just leave all that there just because we, we know where they're at. And... Um, that pretty much does it. So now we have in our card contents folder, we now have under our firmware, we have our OpenTX firmware, and we have our FrySky firmware with the two uh, receivers here. Oh yeah, so we gotta bring the, the transmitter over. So let's go back to FrySky firmware, and now we're gonna do the transmitter, which is right here. I'm gonna open that, double click, double click again, and we're gonna get rid of the, um, we don't need the uh, European version, so we're gonna go, this is the folder we want right here. So just right click and click cut on the R9M R9 uh, light and come on over to your um, card contents folder under firmware, oops, and under FrySky and paste it. And there you go. And this firmware right here that we just brought is for the R9M, the bigger module, and the R9M light, which is the one that went on the X light, okay? All right, so with all this firmware in place ready to be installed, we're ready to go. So the next thing we want to do is we want to, we, remember we formatted our um, SD card. And so we want to now take everything from our card contents folder. So I'm, in the, I'm going to go into the card contents folder. I'm going to highlight all the stuff. Uh, I'll just click all these. And I'm going to click copy. 
and I'm going to go to my uh, SD card. I'm going to click paste. And the reason I do this, like I've said in the videos, is it's much quicker to go this route than it is to run it through the USB cable into your transmitter. Okay. So, so far, we formatted our SD card. We've downloaded the, uh, the SD card contents. We've downloaded the firmware that we need. And now we are transferring it to the SD card itself so we can put it back in the radio, connect to OpenTX Companion 2.3, uh, release candidate 5, and start doing our updates. All right? So here we go. I'm going to move the radio out of the way, and I'm going to get ready to, to show you what we're going to do. All right. So now that we're done, what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on the E drive, and we're going to select Eject. And Oops. Let me wait. Uh, okay. So it's safe to move. I hope I got all this stuff over there. So I'm going to pull the card out. There we go. And now I'm going to give you a shot of the bench. So let's look at that. Here's the radio. I'm going to go ahead and put the memory card in. Put the battery back in. I'm done removing everything. So I'm going to go ahead and put the battery cover back on. And there we go. All right. So now what I want to do is switch my screen to OpenTX, which is right here. I'm going to click the X to close it. And I'm going to go ahead now and plug in my radio and put it in DFU mode. Okay. So to do that, I'm just going to pinch this to the two uh, sub trims here in together and power it on and then let go. And you're going to see on the screen right now, see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Uh, I changed the... Um, I don't know why the screen is so. I, first, to yeah, I don't know why I did that, but I'm really disappointed if it's going to stay that way. But anyways, um, we're going to get it into this point, right? And then we're going to go ahead and plug our cable in the back, just like that. Okay. And I think you guys should hopefully let me put something underneath this so I don't crush it. And I will use this Fry Sky box. So give me one second. That's a little too hot. Let's try this. There we go, okay? So you can see where it says, I know it's hard to read and I wish I could dim that down. I thought I did, but uh, unfortunately I'm stuck right now with this one and I don't want to delay it. So you'll see where it says USB connected, okay? And um, man, that really sucks though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't make y'all look like that, that's terrible. Let me click exit. Welcome to OpenTX, throttle warning. Let me go to my menu. Let me go here and see what I've got. Uh, and let me go to brightness and see if I can adjust it with that. Uh, okay, let's see if that works, okay? All right, now let's go back and do this again. Uh, well, it doesn't look like it's going to stop. Hmm. Not sure why. Used to, I thought it did, but let me see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and connect, and we're just going to get started anyway. So it's connected. And you can see up on the screen here, it's showing me the um, it's showing me uh, the contents of the Tyrannus uh, portion of the drive. And what we want to do now is we want to look at the there you go at the USB drive, and you can see all the files that we just copied. In fact, you can see the firmware folders that we made. Right? Just close these down. You don't need to worry about those right now. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that we're on the right radio profile. So go to settings radio profile. You should make sure you're on the right profile there. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and write our firmware that we downloaded to the radio. So let's go ahead and click this and we want to load it because we changed the file name. So if we go to card contents, this is on our local drive now under downloads, we go to firmware, open TX firmware, and we select the one we did and we're going to click OK, write it. And you can see here the bootloaders blinking, it's flashing. Okay, now it's done, right? So we're done with the bootloader. I'm sorry, we're done with the flashing, and now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make sure that uh, we want to check our SD card against the SD card content. So we're going to say, we already told it the, the SD card is in the X9D plus SE card contents, and we know that drive D is ours, right? And we want to uh, go both directions to synchronize, and we're going to go to the destination folder first, uh, which is what it's saying here, and then we're going to say we want to copy if it's newer. So let's just go, it shouldn't do anything, to be honest with you. Let's click start. Okay and uh, it is skipping all of these that are already duplicates or basically already on the folder. Oh, 
All right, and so it's just gonna run through them, make sure that everything is set and that there's nothing missed. What we care about is that created should probably stay at zero and there should be no errors, okay? And you can see the, uh, as this is going back and forth, you can see the blinking of the uh, top label for the um, bootloader. All right, we're almost done. See what I'm saying? It's a little slow. So, I mean, like, if you're sitting here trying to do this, um, like, send all the files the first time, it takes forever. All right, 98%, 99%, and we're just about done. All right, done, no errors, perfect. Go ahead and close it. Okay, so as it stands right now, we can try to see if there's any models on the radio. I don't think under, oh yeah, there are. I left a couple models. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it at this point for getting this radio up to 2.0. Three. Now we still have to flash the bootloader. So what we're going to do next is we are going to uh, unplug it from the system. And to do that, um, we are going to uh, find our USB port at the bottom here. Whoops. Right click on it and left click on eject Tyrannus. That's, there you go. And then we're going to do it again and we're going to eject the USB drive. There you go. And now we can unplug the USB just like that. And you're going to see where we're at here. All right, where it's bringing you screen to the right from where I'm going to get out of this screen because I don't like this blue background. So I'm going to click, I'm going to go to the exit. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. And it says the EEPROM data, uh, uh, EEPROM warning, uh, that the EEPROM data isn't right. So press any key to continue. And that's fine. Go ahead and press your key and it's going to go ahead and automatically convert your EEPROM for you. Welcome to okay. DX. All right. Now it's yelling at me. So let me go ahead and see where we're at. Okay. So I'm going to increase the brightness now because um, it's definitely a little dark here on my side. So let me go ahead and go to brightness. Uh, there we go. I think that's easy to read. Okay. All right. Now, with this done, now we need, are going to go ahead and update our uh, bootloader. So let's go ahead and go to menu, press page, go to your firmware, go to your OpenTX firmware, locate the one that we did there, hit enter, hold it down, and when it says flash bootloader, hit enter. It's gonna do it very quickly, and now you can hit exit. Now, I usually turn the radio off. I'll turn it back on. Welcome to the TX. And only thing we have as an error is that we have a fail safe that's not set. All the other errors are now gone. So there you go. We are now, if you hold menu, and you keep clicking, keep, keep clicking page, you're gonna see right here, we are running 2.3.0 release candidate five. The release date was, uh, the install date, I guess, I don't think that's the release date, but that's, let me see, I think the release date, this is more of the, uh, let me check though, I'm curious to see. Is that the release date? Let's go see what they say. 2.3.5, no, uh, when did they release that? They released that on, sorry, I'm just curious now. Uh, it says it was done on the 23rd, so this is must be more of uh, when it was installed, I assume. But there's our date, and um, that's it. So we can now click exit, and now it's time to go ahead and set up our receiver and our um, our uh, mo our module. Okay, so let's power it off, and I'm going to flip up the stand here real quick, and I'm going to take out the back plate, and I'm going to go ahead and carefully just insert this here. I'm not going to worry about putting the antenna on right now. What I want to do is I want to go ahead, now that it's on, or installed, I want to go ahead and turn this on. Welcome to the TX. And I want to hit my menu button, hold it. Okay, just like that. Make sure I give you guys enough room to see. All right, and I want to press page. Again, I'm going to go to firmware, and this time I'm going to go to FrySky firmware, and I'm going to go to my R9M, R9M Lite folder, and I'm going to go ahead and update R9M FCC. Hold that down. And make sure you select flash internal mod, or sorry, <laughs> oh God, flash external module. Okay, hit enter. If you flash internal, you're gonna probably break the system. So please, flash external, I apologize. While that's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and open my receiver. All right, now, it's very critical that we update this receiver properly. So um, I am going to make sure that I get this done for you in a way that makes it easy to understand because I have screwed this up enough time on my own, I guess I am wanting to make sure I don't do that to you. All right. So where is, I have a cable here for that. Here, I'm going to just give you this full screen to do real quick while I find the link that I created and my cable. 
I gotta find my cable, which is somewhere here, I think. Bear with me a second. Okay, we're still updating anyway, so we've got some time here. Um, let me see. Let me click save. And we want to go to back here. All right, I'm going to try to pull some data up here. Uh, let me see. Because I have an old blog out here on this and I wanted to make sure that I had it all ready. So let me try something here. Okay, so it's done, right? And it says it's okay, so I'm gonna hit enter. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna leave it. Now we've done the updates that we need to do. Now bear with me a second. Uh, I need to check something here. Um, let I want to make sure that I have this to match you guys. Uh, and let me see if I've got that real quickly. <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. No, no, no. All right, so we are going to do the following update. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it on here. So what you're going to do now is, uh, let me zoom out. That's the problem. So let me zoom out here, right? And what we want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I believe I haven't done this and I, I can try it. I didn't do it this way before, but somebody had asked me if I would give it a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and try it. Okay. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try. So we have our um, outputs here and we're going to give this a shot and see if it works. So we have ground uh, receiving TX. I'm not going to do, on this side, we've got ground positive and um, smart port. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can skip using the internal and just plug this into here i'm going to go ahead and try to connect this to my receiver and i am going to solder it so bear with me a second it won't take very long Let's step aside and if this doesn't work then i'll do it the way i used to do it but i think this will be just fine so if you look at your um, r9mm manual right right here you're going to see right here you have your inverted s port voltage in ground and your smart port we are going to connect right here okay to those three and that is going to be where the four pins are up so that means this sticker can come off right now we're going to prep the board real quick so let's go ahead and do that okay and i really wish i had the pins on this i don't really want to have to square it right now without i wanted to just use the pins but i cannot find my cable i've got everybody else is good to go but just not mine so since I'm going to be soldering the receiver anyway, I guess I might as well go ahead and just get it done. All right, so let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put solder on the three pins that I know we're going to use. I'm going to try to do this without using the old man goggles. So bear with me. There's one, there's two, there's three. Okay, now here are the wires I'm going to use. And we know that based on the instructions here, the second one from the top is going to be our S port. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lightly get this to hopefully get on there. I'm not tacking this port down to the table. I'm just hoping that this will stick, but if it keeps moving, I will go ahead and do that. All right, so there's our S port. And then we're going to go ground. I need some tweezers. I need this board to quit moving. So I probably will end up taping it if it keeps giving me a hard time. Here we go. Uh, there's our ground. And again, these are just temporary connections, so I'm not really worried about it too much. I just want them to stay on long enough so I can write the firmware, okay? And then here is our uh, five volt. I want just enough to hold, please. It hates me. There we go. All right, hopefully that's enough. And now I'm going to see if we can use the radio to do this. So I'm going to go ahead again and plug it in. And uh, like I said, it's going to be okay. So on the bottom here, it's ground, 
positive and smart port. I'm just wondering if this will work, so it'll be curious. I have not done the update like that before, but I will see if it does. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, here's our setup. Let me lower this down a little bit so you can see. Let's try to keep, ah. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I tried to do it, so let me just give you the different angle to look at. Um, I'll give you, I'll tell you what, I'll, do, I'll give you this page right here. <sighs> because I need to use the old man goggles. And there. So you guys can bear with me a second. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to move this stupid camera and it's not wanting to cooperate. There we go. We'll just leave that there. Let me go ahead and just solder this real quick. I just don't want y'all staring at the top of my head. I've already been made fun of for that multiple times. And I don't want to keep doing this sloppy, so let me just fix this and get going. Okay. So, I guess my ground just wasn't soldered on right, so let me go ahead and fix that real quick. There we go. See, when you use the right stuff, it's done. All right, so there we go. Let's get over here. And we're going to plug this back in for the third time now with the wires finally working. And let's see if we can get this done. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to hold menu and I'm going to press page and I'm going to go to firmware and I'm going to go to FrySky and I'm going to go to my R9M R9M Lite and I'm going to go to my R9M FCC and I'm going to hit Nope, sorry. I'm going to, oh my God. I'm going to my Fry Sky, and I'm gonna to go to my R9 Mini, R9MM, hit enter. And I'm gonna do my FCC, not doing F port right now, so let me hit enter. And I'm gonna tell it to flash external module. And this is where it gets interesting for me, is I wanna see if it will pass through. No. All right, so let me go ahead and get this out. And what we'll do is we'll just do it the normal way. I'm not sure if that's ever gonna change or not, but on the pin structure on the back, we basically have the pin structure that says S port. And I think this might be backwards, but let me check real quick. Let me check one second. pin set so give me one second I'm gonna have to move my ca adjust my cable here real quick and at the same time get this updated the odd thing sorry I was just trying to make a note here for you guys the odd thing is that when you do it using the back uh, the wires have to be switched around, so I'm just going to pop these out real quick. Um, and I was hoping that I could do it the other way, but it's not going to work. So I'm just going to pop this out here, and I'm going to remove, I'm going to reverse the ground and the positive because they have to be switched when using this uh, back connection. So let me just do that real quick. Lift these tabs up without poking myself because these severs are sharp. And let's reverse these because the order on the back and where the JST, uh, sorry, the order where this plugs in in the back is actually from the bottom to top, smart port ground and positive. But um, that has changed a lot with the newer models and with uh, the modules. So let me just make sure I get this. Now you can get this cable on our site. Sorry guys, I just was hoping that I could do it without having to do that. But there we go. So now I'm going to go. So from the bottom up, right? You've got the bottom pin, which is your smart port, your middle pin, which is your ground, and your top pin, which is your positive. Okay, so we're just gonna go plug that in this way. And we're gonna go back, and we're gonna hit page, 
go to firmware for SK firmware R9 mini R9 mm and then we're going to hit the FCC version without F port pull it down and then flash external module okay and what you're going to see now is it's writing and the lights are blinking so it's trying to find a, a shortcut and I really uh, you know I was kind of hoping that this was going to work and maybe I'll have to check and see maybe I did something wrong with that one I've never used it like that before but I thought I'd give it a shot I don't know if I have to adjust the pins forward or what but at least this way just plug it in the back and you'll be fine Great. to put something here on the website let's see if we can do that real quick I'll make some notes for you guys and it's it'll say the following uh, note if using x90 plus uh, module bay I gotta to type better module bay pins order from bottom to top is S-port ground and B-plus. See picture. Oh my lord. See picture below. Alright, so I will include a picture and also a link to the cable if you need to get one. I just want to put this so I make uh, remember okay so we're done now our firmware is done i just heard it beep so let's get over here and now we're going to hit exit 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 and we can go ahead and turn this off we can unplug our update cable plug back in our module all right there it is and now i will probably grab the antenna go ahead and install it real quickly We go let's go ahead and just lay that down and tilt this antenna up just like that okay all right now i need to give this power right uh, and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually use this new little uh what you call it that i did viewed a couple days ago this little sucker right here and i think i have enough power in this lipo to try it but this will demonstrate whether we have it working or not, right? Because we need to bind it and make sure it works. So I'm going to plug this LiPo in here. And this uh, is the um, Toolkit RC M6. I really like this. I'm hoping there's enough power. There is enough power. I guess that'll help me a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to plug this in. And as you can see right here, we've got our signal options. So we've got signal, uh, positive, and ground. So now I have to go back. Oh my goodness, time to go back and switch these back. So let me just do that real quick. And this should have stayed the way it was. Put this back the way it was. Let's take the ground out. I suppose if you guys don't have the right cable and you don't want to do what I'm having to do here, you can just solder the positive just to reverse the cables when you attach them to the flight control or to the receiver since it's only temporary but uh okay so there we go now this matches what's supposed to and i'm going to go ahead i'm going to plug that in right here so we can get some power to it right and we should see it start lighting up and there it is okay so let's go ahead and give this a shot here real quick and the first thing we want to do is actually unplug the battery we to turn on our radio. Welcome to Open TX. And uh, we are going to pick a model here. So let's go to page, sorry, menu. And then we'll pick a, um, we will copy this model and we'll move it to uh, model three. Okay. And then we're going to go in there and we're going to rename it to R. Let's go to nine. M, M, T, 
test. Okay, now we're going to go to our binding. And remember, we want to do a few things here, right? So first thing we want to do is we want to turn our internal off. Because if you don't, you will not have the option for telemetry when you try to bind. Now we want to turn our external on. And we want to select the right one, right? So if you can see that, your options PPM, x 16 And we are basically looking to go to the um, R9M FCC, okay? So we're going to hit Enter. And let's scroll down a little bit here. And what we want to do is I am on model two. I believe, let me hit, let me hit exit. So I hit page, menu. I'm on actually, yeah, it's model two. So let me go, well, it should have been three. I did these wrong. Huh, that's fine. So anyways, um, let me just go in here, click page, go up. And I want to make sure that my binding is for binding radio two. I'm going to make it three because I'm going to end up moving these around. So let me just hit menu. And I want to move this, right? I'm going to put it there. All right, so I want my R9 MMS, and you'll understand why in a second, because under uh, under my under my model two, if I hit menu or page, you'll see that I've binded number two, so I keep my receiver number to match the model number. So I would have thrown everything off if I hadn't done that, but let me just go to number three, hold it down, select Local it. Warning. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to change it. Okay, we've got receiver number three. And we have our settings as R9 MFCC as our external. Uh, we have our internal is off. And so that when we go to bind, and I'm gonna select bind, it's gonna tell me I want eight channel telemetry on or off or 16 channel tele telemetry on or off. I'm gonna go with 16 channel telemetry on. Hit enter. Okay, and it's gonna start chirping. Right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hold the bind button down. It's gonna be kind of tricky here because I gotta make sure I do all this. Um, you know what, I'm going to swap spots, put the radio here, instead of using the battery, I'm going to use my voltage, uh, my voltage sensor here, or my, um, my AC to DC voltage here, and I thought I had an extension cable somewhere, but I can't find it, so I'll just kind of slide this over, just like that. Okay, so we've got the machine here, we've got the R9MM here. And we've got the radio already in bind mode. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold the bind button down, just press it down, just like that. And I'm gonna flip this on. And you're gonna see it clicking and we've got our green light. Okay, just like that, right? We're gonna stop binding, hit exit. And we're gonna turn the radio or turn the receiver off. And now turn it back on. Okay, now our light is green. I know you guys have a hard time seeing that, but you'll have to trust me here. The light is Green. There you go, you can see that, right? Right there, okay? So we're bound. Now let me zoom out, all right? And if you look here at the top of our screen, you will see now that we have our RSSI signal here telling us everything looks good, okay? And if you want, uh, we can see our values here. Everything looks good here. And uh, we can also go to our menu, hold it down, hold down page, hold down page. Actually, let me just click page. All right, so uh, let me exit menu, and then hold page down, hold page down, and right here we can see our RSSI value, which is going to be, let's see if it's if I've picked this up yet or not. So let me do a, let me do a discover new sensors just to see if I find anything off of this. And there we go, our RSSI, we're getting 100% right now, and we're looking at our voltage, uh, you know, our voltage value to, from our battery to our receiver at 5.1, which is fine. So we're gonna hit exit, okay? And we're gonna stop discovering, we're gonna hit exit. And now one of the cool features on this is we're going to go to measure. Whoops, it's not touch, I keep forgetting it's not touch screen. Right, and I'm gonna measure S bus. Hit enter, hey, hit enter. Okay, oh, that's not what I wanna see actually. Hold on a second, let's go to, um, I have to now, uh, change something here I forgot, so give me one second because I need to move the cable over to S-Bus. I hadn't done that yet, so let me do that real quick. I left it on S-Port. Now there's S-Bus, okay? Sorry, make sure to move it over when you're testing it. I didn't. So now you can see the screen here. I'll try to get that so you can see it. Okay? And actually, here, let me do this. I'll just take this off and I'll put the LiPo in so I can move it wherever I want. All right, now this would be equivalent to you hooking it up to a flight controller and um, looking at it on beta flight, but I don't want to have to deal with all that. So I'm going to go to S bus again. Now you can see my values. See my stick change here. 
All right, and so this is a really cool way to not have to worry about it. And I think I've got my switches configured as well. All right, and this one, oh, that would be, I have to go down a little bit more. All right, but there you go. So, I, I mean, that pretty much does it. So we've done the firmware update. Uh, we've done the firmware update on our, our R9M. We've done uh, our, our um, OpenTX update to 2.3, release candidate five, and we've done our R9MM uh, update as well. All right, so let me switch this here. Okay, sorry, I wanted to make sure I covered this uh, because I know that the customer who's getting this had asked me to put the video and make sure that there were details because he's got another one to do at his location. So make sure you do that. Make sure you do your 2.3 update. Uh, make sure that you do your R9M download and make sure you do your R9MM download. And I am going to have all those files and a copy of my SD card contents folder for you to be able to download and just put on yours if you want, okay? Or you can at least use it to compare. Uh, and make sure you'll go to the, I'll show you this real quickly one more time. Make sure when you go to um, Cyclone FPV, uh, if you're at the homepage, and then you go down to uh, Logs and Tutorials, and you go to Tutorials, it will be right here, X9D plus update, OpenTX 2.3, add long range, blah, blah, blah. When you click that, there'll definitely be this video. Um, uh, if you click it, hello, there you go. The video will be on here that we're just about to finish. And then here are the links and I'll have some more pictures and instructions like what to do about the cable if you're doing a S port update and so forth. Okay, so hopefully that helps guys. If you have any questions, hit me up at, uh, where is it? Here, that one. Tark at cyclonefpv.com. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And by all means, please stop by our Facebook page and like it and follow it and do whatever they tell you to do with that. All right, outside of that, God bless, have safe flights, and we will see you soon, guys. Take care, bye.